This building has achieved a unique position in contemporary British architecture. It has become a symbol of contemporary life, style and technology, an icon instantly familiar. It has entered the popular imagination, the realm of shared fantasy where fact and fiction dissolve into one another. It is a strange mixture of assertion and enigma. One catches glimpses of it from different places all over London, yet one rarely sees it in full. Although the Lloyds Building is constantly photographed and filmed, its status as icon has overshadowed its character as object. I'm interested in its visual and physical appearance, the way every detail reveals its rigorous intellectual clarity. This is a very radical building. The seemingly windowless exterior is made almost entirely of stainless steel. Masses of silver tubes and funnels rise from the ground. Stacks of identical units all draw the eye upward to the complex crown of the building. These are the essential facilities of the building. The heating and air conditioning ducts, the electric and telephone cabling, the lifts, toilets, staircases. Instead of hiding them at the heart of the building like an embarrassment as is the normal practice, Rogers parades them around its perimeter. He uses them to establish a language of design. He takes these given elements and articulates them to establish scale, rhythm, detail. He doesn't need to introduce design elements, such as columns and pediments. This is not the surface pseudo-architecture of graphic design. Lloyd's is a truly classical building, a great modernist experience of space. Going to the root of the building, to the hidden service basements, we find the source of these ducts and tubes, and the logic of this great machine-like building is clear. Giant heating and cooling units, massive generators, and rooms of batteries to keep the computers going. The world can fail, but Lloyd's can continue insuring forever. One proceeds quite deep into the heart of the building before actually entering it. For such an assertive building, the entrance is comparatively modest, low, a place of transition before entering the grandeur of the interior space. The sight is fabulous, breathtaking. Across an ocean of dark blue carpet is a gleaming white marble rectangle. Above it rises the whole 12-story building, open at the center, right up to a clear glass arch onto the sky. A cascade of escalators, their sides transparent, lit from inside, provide a constant flow of movement. Most modern buildings are comparatively simple on the exterior, but become confused and anonymous on the inside. By contrast, the comparative complexity of the Lloyds building on the outside gives way to a highly graspable simplicity on the inside. In fact, the whole interior is a single vast room. Just as when one walks into the Sistine Chapel and looks up, one's eye is able to take in the order of the whole space in seconds. One looks up and says, my God, it's so simple. The ornate wooden rostrum housing the lutein bell acts as a striking focal point at the base of the great central void. It is this void which orients one wherever one is in the building. Locating the services on the outside has allowed completely open floors free to take the clutter of hundreds of underwriters. 
As the business expands, more and more floors can be given over to the market's use. This is a dream, being able to possess the whole building like this empty, being able to look at it so closely. But of course, it's not how the building normally functions or how it really looks. The effect when the building is filled with busy people is intensely theatrical, with the users functioning as both actors and audience. Far from cold and impersonal, the building is animated by its occupants in a celebration of the business it houses. To travel to the upper floors, one leaves the main body of the building, crossing glass bridges that afford glimpses of the outside world, and proceeds to the lift towers. The glass lifts allow sweeping views of the stainless steel exterior and the complex vitality of the surrounding cityscape. Everything in the building has been designed with consistent attention and detail. The standard of craftsmanship and materials is of the very highest quality. Even the smallest detail of these handrails reveals the logic of the whole building. The 11th and 12th floors, the executive floors, were commissioned from another design team, not from Rogers. The result is conventionally executive and sadly disappointing. The unity and integrity of the whole design is lost. Just look at this handrail in comparison with the others. It could come from any London wine bar. But this floor does hold a real surprise. This room with its original Adam fireplace was moved from Bowood House in Wiltshire to the old Lloyd's. Rogers incorporated it into the new building, placing it here on the executive floors. The shock of abruptly entering such an entirely different world is a dramatic example of Rogers' attitude towards other styles and periods of architecture. He allows each its full integrity. He refuses compromised reasonableness. One sees this attitude again in the relationship of Lloyd's to its neighbors. Far from indifferent to them, it emphasizes by distinction their differences of style and material, enhancing the contrasts of historical and visual complexity that make cities exciting. Rogers honors the past by his pride and confidence in the present. The problem for architects today is the same as it has always been, how to respond to contemporary needs with contemporary sensibility and contemporary technology. This is the only modern building in London that's really captured my imagination. Great buildings always give me a special kind of pleasure. And as an artist, a mixture of jealous admiration and vicarious pride.